Man, I don't know about you, but I think I need a vacation for my vacation. Yeah. I, I, I had no fun this vacation. What did you end up doing? Uh, floating around the pool. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do? I painted a house. Yeah. Well. In the scorching sun, 95 degrees, 105 index. Yeah, I, I wasted away. Here's some gloves. Four. Every time I see somebody on Instagram or Facebook, they're wearing gloves. So just here's some gloves. <laughs> You know? <laughs> <You're too laughs> the proverbial glove shot. Uh, the, oh, yeah, there we go, the glove shot. Um, hey, welcome back. We are back live. Yes, we are done being vacation. Obviously, he is the smarter cowboy. I'm the dumber cowboy. I worked. He played. Um, you also went and got your confiscated, or not confiscated, but concealed weapons, didn't you? Hush, hush. Ah, oh, silence. He did good. He did good. Um, but what we are going to be doing today is... Something that most people, I mean, I know I get asked it quite a bit, are in Detailing 101. I know you probably a million times you've been asked this. How can you really, re how deep can you go on exactly. removing things? So yeah. I mean, he's going to show you all that. We got the ideal car. I mean, literally, there's handprints that is etched into the paint. There is, I mean, yeah. we could get the FBI in here. But, um, <laughs> like, I mean, could you? It will come off, yeah. Could you? Yeah. Um, it's like melted paint. Yeah, melted paint. That's good old Florida. But no, thank you again for tuning in, like I said. And if you have any comments, questions, you know, put them down below. I'm going to head over that way. I'm going to turn the show over to him. But I do see that even Mike is like, I got to get on his bandwagon because we get back from vacation and he's got a new toy. And I just want to know how you rate, buddy. How do you rate? But I'm going to go over there. I will. Here's your gloves. No, those are your gloves now, man. <laughs> uh, hey, well, the, today's topic, and first of all, uh, just want to get this out in the open there. We do these live detailing classes now every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. And, of course, when we're done, they'll be up on our YouTube channel. But if you tune in while they're live, you can ask questions on the Facebook feed live. And, of course, then we'll answer them interactively. Uh, also, like to point out most of the things that we show in these classes, I also teach in my three-day and two-day car detailing classes. So keep that in mind. If you ever want to take a really fun class that's all hands-on, this yes. is the place to go. Yes, definitely. Uh, a d must do. Yeah. So one of the topics that we're going to talk about today is uh, how far to go in removing swirls and scratches or, say, water spots. And this is really common, especially for people that, say, buy a used car and it already has a That's deeper... That's new to you. It's new to you, car. <laughs> and it has uh, swirls and scratches. And, uh, I mean, it's really common for someone to, uh, A, get the detailing bug, buy a polisher, and then, of course, want to remove every single scratch out of the car's paint. And that's a, a noble idea. And I feel your passion when you want to do that. However, uh, the, 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 the issue is, is we're limited as to how much paint we can remove. And um, this is uh, one of the books I've written for the industry. Um, and in it, actually, this was published in 2013. And as far back as then... You'll see uh, my grubby fingers holding a post-it note up here. Here, hold on. Let me get in there and zoom With in. the DeFelsco paint thickness gauge, and I'm explaining how thin factory paint is, and that's why you're limited. It's not that you don't have great skills and abilities, the best tools, the best compounds in the world. You just don't have much to work with. So there's a limit as to how much paint you can remove, which means how much of the swirl, the scratch you can remove without compromising the clear coat. And there's, there's kind of two ways to compromise the clear coat. One, you could actually buff so much of the clear off that you've exposed the base coat. But the other way that you can compromise the clear coat is to not actually go through the clear coat, but to leave it so, as I like to say, whisper thin whisper thin, that when exposed to the elements, rain and sunshine, it fails. You get what's called clear coat failure. So you set your, your car's paint up for, for failure. failure. Yeah. And, um, no, well, and one of the things also, and I covered the, I actually took the time to go through here and find the definition for the word oxidation. And it's kind of, uh, it's not super complex. I wrote it in a real simple way. If we had Sheldon from Big Bang here, he could probably do a better job of explaining it. <laughs> but basically, it's, uh, it's, it's free radicals in the air around us, and they're absorbing molecules off the things around them, including yours truly. You know, we get older as we age. The paint gets older. But the molecules of the paint will leave the paint and attach to these free radicals. And this usually shows up as oxidation. But the point is, 
is so if you buff this car and get the paint so clear, because it's continually exposed to free radicals in the air, it is going to get worse and worse, not better and better. So you mean the, you mean thin or clear? You said clear. the clear. Get the clear thin oh, okay. and thin. Yeah, right. get the clear. As you buff it and get it thinner and thinner, you might not go through. But you could leave it so thin that because it's always in a state of break, a state of chaos, or the, the second law of thermodynamics, everything is in a state of breaking down. Sure you didn't get a science degree <laughs> while you were on vacation, my God. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to cover that because it's a, it's, a common, it's a common question, it's a common quest people want to do, and I, I get it, I was there. Usually when people are new to detailing, you know, they try to take every single car they get and put a show car finish on it, and that's why I teach, in my detailing classes, I teach Production detailing, show car detailing. Production detailing is one step. You use a good one step cleaner wax or an AIO. Show car detailing would be multiple step. That's where you're compounding, polishing, and then sealing the paint with the wax, a sealant, or a coating. But you're doing multiple steps versus one step. So production detailing versus show car detailing. And new people to the industry, they try to do show car detailing on everything they detail. And it's admirable, it's noble, I get your passion, but if you're doing this for money, you've got to remember that you know time is money and you want to, you know, if your customer's not paying for show car detailing, you've got to have in your packages production detailing. So yeah, anyway, you, you gotta eat. that's what the to topic's going to be about. Um, then we're also, we do have the brand new um, iteration or version of the Boss 21 from Griot's. Mm, um, have not opened this up, so when we open it up, whatever the surprises are, you're going to find out right along with us. Empty box. Let's hope everything's <laughs> in there. Um, I also went ahead and pulled out the complete Griot's Boss system, including their their uh, microfiber pads, their foam cutting, this white, which kind of throws people because a lot of foam polishing pads are white, but this is actually a really coarse cutting pad. You can feel how sharp it is. Wouldn't it be so nice if all the pad manufacturers <laughs> actually like, hey, let's all get together and make a... You mean uniform. a universal color code? Yeah, that would be just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'd take an act from the United Nations to get everybody on the same page, and then it still probably won't work. Right. Uh, but I have their pad system and their chemicals. And by the way, in my, I'm going to plug my detailing classes. In my detailing classes, I cover pretty much every popular tool and paint polishing system on the market. So you don't just learn one tool and one chemical line. And if a company like Griot's has a system, so they got a tool, pads, and chemicals, as a professional courtesy to them and to everybody that takes the class, I show the system as a system. Now, later on when you leave, if you buy their tool, you can use it with whatever pads and chemicals you like. But in my classes, uh, no matter what the brand is, Rupes, Sonax, Flex, Griots, if, if they've got a tool in a system, I show it as a system. So we're going to unbox this. We're going to uh, go over how to do a test spot because we've got everything here we need to do a test spot. And there's a lot of confusion over test spots, so I'm going to explain it and break it down over here on the trunklet of this car. And um, and then as I look up over here, we got to uh, we're talking about paint thickness gauges. So let's go ahead and just start there then. Um, for just a second, I'm going to go ahead and pull this out of the way. And I want to share my favorite little tool. This is the Defelsco paint thickness gauge. This is 700 bucks. It's American made. It's got a ruby tip instead of a ground off steel tip. It uh, has a microprocessor in there that can, um, it can modify how it's measuring things compared to the temperature. So if you take a, a reading on the side of a car inside a garage and then you walk outside in 100 degree heat, if, the, if, the, if your paint thickness gauge couldn't adjust for that temperature change, you'd get a false reading. This one can do that. So it can do so many different things than the cheaper knockoffs uh, try to copy. Anyway, this, and then the, to say this, and I'm a big, since I write a lot, I like to share how to say words correctly. For example, when you say it's griots, not griots, okay, griots. So it's griots, okay, uh, the T is silent. Uh, and the way you say this is called a D-E-F, -D -E def, E-L-L, sco, defelsco. It's not delfesco like a Dell computer, it's a defelsco. So defelsco paint thickness gauge. Now, what I usually use these for is primarily, A, to keep me safe, so I'm not doing too aggressive of a paint correction step on what is already thin paint. Maybe the dealership, maybe another detailer has buffed this out multiple times and they've pretty much left me nothing to work with. So it's gonna keep me safe if I get a really thin reading. But I also use it for marketing. So, you know, competition is getting fierce out there in the detailing world. And the ability to, when talking to a, a potential customer, to say, hey, Jim, 
Let's take a look at your paint and walk over and pull this out and take a couple of measurements. First thing Jim's going to say is, wow, what's that little tool you got there, Mike? And I go, well, Jim, that's a paint thickness gauge. It'll tell me how thick the paint is on your car, and that'll tell me how, how, how aggressive or how non-aggressive I need to be to preserve that paint on your car. I guess that could also save you if somebody's like, they have a, a hot rod that they bought from somebody, and they're like, oh, I want it totally, totally shiny. I want to use wet sand and everything like that. And you put that paint thickness gauge on there, and there's only like half a mil of paint or something yeah. on there. And you're like, <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't yeah. do that, because yeah. I would literally obliterate your paint. So it actually could yeah. help save your client. You know, his yeah, it, it protects yourself, it protects your client, but it's also just a good marketing aid. You know, so after talking to Jim, if Jim says, well, Mike, your prices are too high for what I need, I'm gonna go elsewhere. Then when he starts talking to uh, the other detailer, he'll notice that the other detailer probably doesn't pull out a tool like this, plus all the other things I show. In fact, that's a video we gotta make. What? Make is called the get a new customer I kit. think this is the second time we said it, so maybe yeah. next week we'll do that. I'll one. show you everything you should always have with you no matter where you're at, fixed location or mobile detailer, to be able to talk intelligently to a potential new customer to show them that you really know your craft. Anyway, so this is a paint thickness gauge. It's a very accurate one. They call it a 3% gauge, and when you're measuring in mils or microns, uh, you know, 3% may not sound like a lot, but most of the knockoffs on the market are the cheaper ones are 5 and 6 and 7 and even worse you know, percentage. And so that when you're talking about a percentage of, of a mill, that's not very much room and the paint's already thin to start with. So it's important to have a gauge that's very accurate. Now, let me just kind of walk you through how right, this thing on, works. Let me get, get, get ready. All right, you guys are gonna be on his hands. You're not gonna see his mouth. Okay, so the first thing to do to turn, now, and all, all, right. all these tools are different, but the, I'm gonna show you how to use the one that I'm most familiar with. To use it, the first thing you do is you just, you use it and that turns it on, okay? And, um, and from this point here, because I don't know who's I try been, to keep it all in that plane. Because I don't know who's been monkeying around with this out here in the garage. The first thing I want to do is calibrate it. And one of the nicest things about the Del Fesco paint thickness gauge is calibration is really simple. There's buttons on either side, and you take your fingers and you press both buttons three times very fast. So that would look like this. One, two, three and it'll send itself through its own little calibration uh, profile and it'll calibrate the tool. And so I know 100% this is accurate. Now, I like to measure in mils, okay? Um, I think it was Jimmy Carter tried to get us onto the metric system back in the 70s. 70, 76? It never took. <laughs> so, Obviously. <laughs> you know, so I don't know, I, I go by mils, but it's also, I use the post-it note analogy and I can wrap my brain around this. Now, I know across the pond and here in the United States, a lot of guys like to go by microns. The thing is, is I can't in my brain think of something that I can go, oh yes, I understand that's 80 microns. It just, it doesn't work for me. So it doesn't matter what kind of measurement system you want to use as long as you can wrap your brain around it, but I'll show you how I do it. Well, any of you that are over the pond, if you guys can translate three mils into microns, do it in the comments, please. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I do is I turn it on. Now, if I want to, if I want to, sh let me back up here. To, <laughs> okay, to, to, to calibrate it, you, put, you push both buttons at th three times fast. If you want to change it from mils to microns, you'll take and you hold those buttons in for what seems like a turning and you'll hear it beep and it'll switch to microns. Did it change? Yep. Okay, so now I'm reading in microns. Now, if you want to flip the display, so say I'm going to run down the side of a panel and I want it to read upside down, then you just take and push one of the buttons one time and it'll flip the display. And it is a rather large, easy to read display. You're not being a good hand model. You're bouncing all over. Sorry, people, for driving you drunk over there. Is that working? Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and flip it back to Mills because, you know, I just don't get microns. I guess I answered my own question. We could have just did the same test and flipped it out. Nope, I need to be able to understand what I'm talking about. No, 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 I'm about, <laughs> I asked them to translate. Oh, they can do that too. Okay, so now a lot of the things that um, I'm always trying to educate people on and teach people, and this has to do with this over here, is the factory clear coat on a new car is thin. And um, how thin is, is actually, and, uh, and I want you guys to know where I get this from. I didn't just make this up. So a few years ago, um, I had a rather lengthy discussion with Dr. David Gaddusi, who's a PhD organic chemist. He's also the owner and creator of Optimum Polymer Technologies. And besides owning Optimum Polymer Technologies, in his life as a chemist, he's worked for probably two thirds of the different automotive paint manufacturers in the world. He helped to invent base coat clear coat technology. And here's what he told me, he said, Mike, 
we know from testing that you need at least two mils of clear over the base coat in order to protect the entire finish from basically disintegrating over time. Okay, and you gotta think about it, you gotta have some amount of material there just to hold up. And so that's why they put two mils on. Now, they're not gonna put more paint on than they need to because you gotta understand companies like Ford and Honda, Mercedes-Benz, BMW, Toyota, they do things on scale. You know, they're pumping out a million of these cars every year and if they put an extra half gallon on each car, that's gonna be a lot of money. So they don't, they don't put any less on than they need to, but they don't put any more on, more on they don't put any more paint on than they have, have to. to. So you get about two mils of clear. Now in my book, when you see me hold the post-it note in here, I think it's on page four, here's how I did that. First of all, you need, you need a piece of clean, flat metal. Okay, this is gonna be your, uh, your control. And then you're gonna take and you're gonna hold your paint thickness gauge down and you wanna get an accurate measurement. Okay, can you zero. read that? It's on zero. So it's zero. Here's a post-it note. I'm gonna put it on here and do the same thing. 3.0. 3.0. Okay, now follow me. I can take and hold this between my thumb and my finger and I can feel how thin that is. Everybody, take a piece of paper out and put it in your fingers. And this is true for a dollar bill or even a printer paper, but I just use post-it note because I always have them in the classroom. But when I'm holding this like that, that post-it note, I can wrap my brain around that and I can go, wow, that's really thin, okay? Your clear coat's thinner. That's the whole point of the post-it note. This is thin. The factory amount of paint on your car is thinner than a post-it note. So I, I, I see all kinds of guys that have really great intentions to remove every single scratch out of someone's car, but you don't have that much material to work with. And even if you don't go through the clear trying to remove it, you can leave that clear layer so thin that it's gonna fail when you put it back into service. Especially in sunny oh, areas. Yeah. Makes sense? Makes okay. So anyway, so that's a little bit about the thickness gauge. Now, we'll go ahead and take some measurements here because we're going to do some heavy compounding over here. And uh, right, Yancey? Let me zoom in. All right. Okay, so, so for me, <laughs> oh, sorry, okay. For me, what I would point to is there seems, appears to be like a little scratch in the glass right here. Right. So I'm just going to take three basic measurements right through so here. So you're using that as your reference. That's my reference. So okay. just. All right, you have 6.3. 6.3. 6.5. 6 6.4. So we have a pretty good base. That's probably the factory paint. It probably hasn't been chopped on by, you know, hack detailers too much. That's probably what it came from, from the factory. So now we'll take and we'll measure that when we're done. and We'll see how much clear oh, we, let's we write took them off. Down. Um, I happen to have a post-it note here. Hey, you have a post-it <laughs> note. Imagine that. All right, here. Okay. Here I actually I travel with post-it notes and my paint thickness gauge wherever I go. All right. Uh, we had six, five, six, four, six, five. Uh, yeah, six, four, six, I forget. Uh, six, four, six. Four. We can measure again. That's, that's okay. Okay, there's six, two. You know, the, the idea though, you want to, you know, if you see something go from six to 23 uh, mils or. Well, what we'll do is that we'll find one of our defects and we'll measure right on that defect. So that okay. would be the thing. Okay, so before we get buffing, I'm we're going to, we're going to check out the brand new Grios Empty Box 21. Okay, you know, Griot's does a really good job of packaging their tools. I mean, uh, I mean, everything about this is professional. First of all, you get this nice fold-out poster, and um, it just kind of gives you all the information you need about the Boss system, and it's also kind of a, a sure, guide sure to get you they started. the entire process out. Yeah, it, it's a guide to get you started. In case you've never buffed out a car, you can read through this one piece of paper, post it to the wall where you're gonna work on your car and kind of go through it and it'll tell you what to use and how to use it. So well, good job. Well, the good thing about systems too, what do you call it? they made this to all work together so there's really no thinking in it. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna pull out is this. This is like an old pencil bag we had in school. <laughs> you're dating yourself, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, pencil, ink pen bag. Uh, you sure a stylus a, for my laptop. Right? You, you sure it wasn't a chisel and hammer? Wow, look at that. It used to get one set of um, brushes now you get two. Oh, look at that. So now you can Upgrade. help. Upgrade. You got the Allen wrench you need. Um, here are two different, um, I have, oh, those must be, um, I have no idea what those are. <laughs> <laughs> Rod, I'll have to read the instructions this. to find out. Well, there are two different color boats. There's a black one and a, a gold one. And they have, um, they have like uh, spacers on them. Maybe for the backing plate? 
Uh, I don't think they'd be for the backing plate. Uh, That's the thing that kind of threw me. Plus, the backing plate's already bolted on. Um, maybe Rod is watching from... Uh, he said he was driving, but hopefully he'll... If you don't find it, we can... Pad maintenance. Okay, well, we'll find out sooner or later. Like, if we turn on the tool and it doesn't work because it's missing a bolt. Okay, so let me put this aside. Hey, and this is the fun of doing things live. What the hell are those for? <laughs> okay, so here is the actual tool. And then it looks like underneath the packaging is the uh, power the cord. cord. Woo! The beta, the, that's the best thing that they've came up with. You it's, get one of the longer extension cords, plug and play your polishers, man. That is the best way to do that. Okay, here's the tool. And uh, right, I'll just run down kind of some of the cool features about it. Um, first of all is they have a really intelligently designed trigger. Everybody loves the trigger. It's, uh, I forget what they call it, but it's, it goes from zero to whatever the max speed. It's just, it's very well designed. Um, you have a lock button on it right here, pull this variable down. Variable trigger? Yeah, variable speed trigger. Uh, there's actually another term for it. Uh, I can't think what it's called though. Uh, but anyway, lock button. And here's a tip, guys. Whenever you're polishing on cars, always use the lock button. Just set the dial speed where you want to buff, lock it, and then, then you don't got to sit there and try to hold the trigger in. Plus, you don't wear out the trigger. Um, it has the, uh, the variable speed dials on both sides of the tool. So you, if you're left-handed or right-handed, it's quick, fast, and easy to adjust. Which I don't understand why they didn't do more of them did it that way. It yeah, I know. It's pretty sense. smart, huh? <laughs> well, uh, here, I'll share this with you. Uh, I, I shared this on the forum, I think it was last week. But... Um, you know, a lot of people know I, I left Meguiar's to take this awesome job at AutoGeek. But what, you don't work at Meguiar's anymore? No, but like five or six of my buddies at Meguiar's also left about the same time I did. And a number of them ended up at uh, Griot's Garage. So they have this wealth of uh, information just from years and years of being in the detailing industry. Um, so, and great guys, real great guys, and their passion is always car detailing. Uh, this has what they call the uh, platypus. I think they call that the platypus I do believe they do handle. Kind of a, a normal uh, rear, rear handle back here. And it's like a rubberized texture. Too. It is. It's got a real, it's really grippy. It's got a texture to it that makes it real easy to hold, so it's ergonomic. It also has finger slots up here, so you can hold it like this, you know, for maximum control of the tool you're That's buffing. how I do it. I wrap my hand around the front. Yeah, it's real nice. And, uh, Let's see, it's got what's called a tool rest. These are uh, rubber tool rests here. Well, of course, this it, is rubber. It. So you can set this down. And oh, do it right in front. It will, <laughs> I just will to slide it off. Back. Oh, so you can set it like this and it won't tip over. <laughs> Make the camera go with me. All right, <laughs> Jesus. Okay, uh, a couple other things about it. Um, it has uh, vents here with the stainless steel little grills here to keep dust bunnies from getting in there, getting into the motor, the armature, Which and the a brilliant brushes. design also. Yeah, on both sides, and so you can pop them off and clean them. That's the cool thing about it. And of course, the brushes, a screwdriver, unscrew this, pop out the brush, put the new brush in, tighten it down, you're, you're back in the game again. Uh, so very well designed, nice design features on this. Um, we're not going to hopefully need these. I don't think we will, <laughs> whatever they are. Yeah, so I'll set them aside here. Uh, of course, this is the 21, so that means a 21 millimeter long stroke polisher. So as the pad's spinning in a circle, it's going to make a little circle inside that circle. And the diameter of the little circle is 21 millimeters. That's exactly what that means. Um, it also has what looks like, and I don't have too much, I haven't read anything about this, but I can tell you right now, this has a oh, vented, vented backing yes. plate. I think they're doing that on all their, all their tools. And this to help to cool down the tool and to keep the pad cool. Yeah, and so of course the backing not, plate. Yeah, that way you're not destroying stuff. And there's also these air intake slots here on the side where all the heat is generated up here where the drive unit is. So really well thought out. And I also know that the, uh, the, the, uh, the tool manufacturer that creates all this, these really high quality bearings. I mean, it's a really well-built tool. And I think you'll see when I turn this on just how much power this thing has. And it's quiet, it and isn't loud. There's I've never used the new one, but the old one was fine if you yeah. ask me. <laughs> so, so this has to be an improvement. Okay, so here's the power cord. And this is one of the cool things they did about the power cord is um, you can take and unwind this thing. Look, it's got two different uh, strappy doos to keep it together. That's the technical term, people, strappy doos. Strappy doos. Thing of a genius. You went from talking all scientific to strappy doos. What the hell happened? That's right. You used up all the big Someone words. forgot to pull me a power cord, Yancey. Oh, well, hey. Okay, so here we go. So here's the, uh, I don't need it right now, but here we go. Here's the, uh, the cord. And the way they design this is actually, this has kind of got a little detent and a little notch. Hold and on. you're going to be able get to get up on that because that's that's pretty important. Yeah, and the idea is is this will snap into place, but then to pull it out, you don't just pull it out. You want to press that down. Yeah, they also have uh, when they debuted that design, Nick uh, Grio 
the the isn't it Nick? Yeah. Um, what do you call it? They have a video of him where he's swinging, swinging the balls around, around his head. Yeah. We'll do that when we pull your car in. All right. Cool. Awesome. So here you can hear it click. Listen. Click. There he goes. Click. There he goes. Okay, and then of course to pull it out. That's a nice snug fit. There, just yank. You know, don't yank it out, but press the lever in, pull it out. Uh, but anyway, well designed tool. Okay, so uh, that is the Griot's Boss. It's just kind of a quick, out of the box, what does it look like, what do you get? Uh, let me see, one thing I do notice about this right away is the backing plate here has got white, um, flexible rubber on it. Usually these are black. And uh, one Maybe of the- they made that so that way you can mark it. Yeah, I'm gonna take a guess that one of the reasons you, uh, that's for is so you can take a marker and place a little mark there so you can monitor with your eyes pad rotation. Well, at least that's what Mike's gonna do with it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, a, it's important because if the pad's not rotating, for the most part, you're not doing anything. Um, I've actually had guys try to argue with me that you can get correction out of a free spinning orbital polisher if the pad's just kind of jiggling against the paint. And maybe if you stood there for a million years, that might be true, but none of us have that kind of time. So you want to look down and make sure that pad is rotating. Gracias, amigos. Okay. Oh, wow, you learned Spanish, too. Wow, look at that. That's smooth and right quiet. Right, let's put it on your other side so that way you, you don't tip over it. There you go. Spin. That was We're a doing a dance. <laughs> Here, when, uh, let me hold that up so we can see the motion. No, the, the pad straight to me. Straight to me so they can see the... Oh, I'll show yeah. that with the pad, but... Um, well, I got a really good showing okay, the white. So here's 21 millimeters. See this inner circle and the outer perimeter? That's 21 millimeters. That's big. That's a yeah. big stroke. You know, over the, my life in this industry, sometimes no matter what the tool is, I've had people buy a tool and they say, hey, when I hold in the air, it vibrates. Yeah, you're not supposed to polish the air. <laughs> you know, put a pad on it and put it against the paint. And there's a reason it's probably vibrating. There's nothing between the pad and the tool. Okay, so let's real quickly just kind of walk through the boss system. Now, I got to tell you, this is a really well thought out system. And anybody that reads a lot of my articles, has listened to any of my videos, I talk a lot about two words. No, you talk a lot. <laughs> Abrasive technology, okay? And I, I meet guys all the time that think because they can make a car look good that it's all about them. They are so good. But the thing is, is they aren't touching the paint. What touches the paint? The, the chemicals on the pad. The abrasives yep. touch it first. Then the pad, then the tool, then the guy. The guy is the least important factor when it comes to polishing paint. Sure, technique's important, but you know, um, I've had little girls, little boys, old men and ladies take my classes. They got no technique and they turned out perfect work their first time mm -hmm. because it's not them touching the paint, it's the abrasive touching the paint. If you start out with great And being properly schooled. Yep, yeah, you'll get great results. So let me, let me apply that to the Boss chemical line. So a lot of times when you're looking at a company's compounds or polishes, the abrasive technology in each of those products is different. Not so with Boss. Each one of these products use the exact same type of abrasive. The difference is, is in the quantity. So the fast correction compound here, it has the most abrasives in it. You get down here to the finishing sealant, it has the least in it. So you're using superb abrasive technology, and, and, and I've already read thousands of comments online about how, how great, you can't make a mistake with these products. So they start with great abrasive technology, but the difference is, is the concentration of the amount of abrasives in each bottle. The most to the least, somewhere in between. Now, these first products right here, this is an aggressive cutting compound. This is what I call kind of a medium cut compound. This would be like a medium polish. This last product would be like a fine cut polish, but if you notice the word sealant in there. So technically you could call this an AIO or a cleaner sealant. So it's okay. gonna cut and wax. But the big idea is this, you start with one of these after you dial in your test spot, you finish out with this and you're done. Make sense? All right, makes sense to me. But here's a little caveat. If you want to install a ceramic coating, you wouldn't want to use the sealant. These here, and you could- why is that? Because you always want to use a panel wipe to remove any polishing oils, but 
There's no way to know, especially a product from Griot's, I'm sure their sealant's great, but once you put the sealant on it, it sticks to the paint. It's you the can't, sealant. <laughs> yeah, you can't trust that a panel wipe's gonna remove it. So if you decide to put a ceramic coating on, you're kind of in this family groups. If you just wanna finish out what their last product can be done, then go ahead and use this product. Just something to keep in mind. I, I, the reason I point this out is I see a lot of people say, hey, can I put a ceramic coating on after I've buffed out my car with a cleaner wax? And the answer is no. no. You just put wax on the paint. Now the coating can't make a proper bond. You just put a film between you and your paint. That's right. Okay, now their pad system is also really nice. First, let me show these microfiber pads. And they've done a lot of engineering. So. So one um, of them hold them down so because they're kind of blending into your shirt. Uh, yeah, uh, and uh, the thing you can see, this one's really thin. This one has a foam backing on it, an interface to it. So you know, most of you probably know what this means, but this is your aggressive pad. This is your less aggressive cutting pad. And why pad. is that? Because the foam is going to provide cushion, which is just going to reduce the aggressiveness of the pad. Um, the fiber length on this is fairly short. And yeah, they're about the same, aren't I they? I think it's about the same, yeah. So basically what you're looking at is just the, the foam backing is what's going to give you a less aggressive cut with this. But th they are a short fiber, you know, uh, compared to some on the market. And what this does, this short fiber does, is on harder medium paints, it actually lets you finish out without micromarring. Longer fibers tend to put deeper scratches in, so uh, they're, they're just well thought out pads. Uh, so these are for aggressive cutting. Now, when we get over here to the foam pads, um, I said this earlier, maybe Yancey, you can come around and you could be my uh, a victim from the audience. Oh, a victim from the audience. Whenever you're looking at foam pads and you don't know the color code, here's what you do. Run your hand over it. I'm running. And, and if it's a cutting pad, you'll feel the sharpness. Sharp, isn't it? Yeah, and you can hear it. It's really sharp. It's one of the sharpest pads on the market. So this is, this is no slouch when it comes to cutting. Now, I think they refer to this as a light cutting pad, right. and you can feel some cut there. It's and it's pretty stiff. And it's stiff, but not as no, this not is, as stiff as that. First time these came out, you know, I gotta tell you, I was scared to use it. Well, well you can even tell by when you put your finger in it, the dimple yeah, it holds the holds it. Shape. Or this one, yeah. it kind of pops right back. And, and of course, after you start using these they with products, they'll soften up. But this is really aggressive. And uh, one area that I really like these pads is in their uh, two inch and three inch pads when using micro tools. So you want to get a lot of cut out of a small pad, the more aggressive the you, When you go to a smaller tool, sometimes you kind of lose some of the power because that is a smaller tool. So you can amp that up by going to a more aggressive pad. And these come in two inch and three inch as well as six inch also. Saved my butt a couple so times. So aggressive cutting. A light cutting, yellow is polishing, then black is finishing. And if you look at their labels, you got these little ribbons down here where the letters are, and color notice how they're for the win. They're <laughs> color coded, yeah. So uh, again, um, you, well thought out. If you don't really know what you're doing, you could start out. If you if you were going to use this pad, you could use this chemical. But down the road, as you get comfortable, you could start mixing and matches. There's no rule against maybe using the more aggressive pad with a less cutting chemical or vice versa. Yeah, it all depends on your paint uh, hardness. Yeah. So anyway, so that's the, the boss system. And I'll tell you a couple things about all of their liquids here is long buffing cycle, okay? Uh, short buffing cycle would mean the product dried up and got dusty on you. So that would be the opposite of these. Long buffing cycle, they, they, never, they never dust up, they never dry out. As long as you're moving the buffer, they stay wet on the surface and the abrasives continue to cut. Uh, easy wipe off. I have never met anybody that likes a compound or a polish that wipes off hard. I and hate the, it. <laughs> the more it. you work around the car, the more tired you get, and it just becomes a real pain if something wipes off hard. I, so I seriously, I find mm -hmm. products that wipes off easy because I do not want to fight. That's like uh, the highest criteria. Yeah, it's like <laughs> I, I don't want to fight it after I've been working for a while. Uh, anyway, so, uh, but anyway, amazing products, and uh, you can't go wrong. I always tell people, if, you know, if you're just starting out, the Boss system is a good way to go. And here's something else. Even if you don't buy their tool, these pads and chemicals work on anything. Yeah. So, and if you do buy their tool, of course, you could use other people's chemicals and pads. So, however you want to do it. Um, anyway, so let me look over here to my, I got a board here to keep me on track. He's not just staring off into distance. Uh, the Boss system, the, uh, the Boss tool. Okay, we did the paint thickness gauge. So now let's talk about how to do a test spot. Test spot, and, and I have the little graphics. Uh, and since on. I got this here, I'll just show this. This is really cool. This is the Boss uh, Swirl Finder light. And what's really nice about this is they actually give you two lights plus a magnetic base. Uh, cue the truck. <laughs> yeah, outside. So on the side, here's a little switch. You flip this on, and this is kind of for looking for swirls, and you can adjust this. And um, can, me, you, can you see the swirls? Let me get up in there. Yeah, move the light back towards you. There you go. Uh, angle it back towards you. 
No, no, no. There you go. Okay. All right. Okay, so I, I usually use that for swirls. Um, then over here on the side, there's a LED light with a little dial in here so you can, you know, it's, it's like a real stat. You can get it really bright or really low. And I, you know, here's what I like to use this for is after I'm done waxing a car or putting a ceramic coating on is going along the side and looking for um, high spots. Oh, it show works. me the um, fingerprint. <laughs> yeah. Can right. you see these? Go back to the back one. That this one, one right there. Yeah. This is actually a handprint there. Yeah, that's a handprint. Okay, right there, so people. we did a waterless wash on this car and I clayed it and it never came off. Yeah, I mean, look, you guys can <laughs> see the fingerprints. I mean, that is in the paint. It's like, it's, it's, and oh, look at right there. All right, I can see the other ones right now. All right. That's, yeah. that's what we're dealing with today, people. And, uh, and just since we covered, we're showing this, um, sometime tomorrow, I will be using this new tool and these products over this entire car so I can do a full review of the tool and of course the system. That'll be on the forum, autogeekonline.net. Okay, so let's talk about how far can you buff to remove defects without compromising or going through the clear coat. Um, the, the oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Rod, thank you for tuning in. The fasteners you are asking about are explained here. Balancing the combined weight of the backing plate, buffing pad, and liquid on the pad translate into less vibration and a smoother running machine, for oh. instance, microfiber pads generally weigh nearly twice as much as foam pads. Rod, you're the man. Thank you for tuning in and clearing that out. So those are weights, like counterbalance weights. Gotcha. Okay, so here, I'll, I'll stand these up. The caveman in me would probably turn the polisher on and go. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it does, it does. As long as that pad's rotating, I'm golden. All right, so that's what those are that's for. A, yeah, because I kept going, oh, where the heck would those bolt on to? Plus, look, it's working without them. So. <laughs> it works without them. <laughs> I'm not sure Thank how. Thank you, Rod, for tuning in on that. Thank but, you very much. And Rod, uh, Rod Kraft, who we're talking about, who's on the Facebook, he... Uh, he's one of these guys, he's, he knows more about detailing cars than, um, uh, he's forgotten more about detailing cars than I'll ever know. He's really smart. If you're ever in a situation where you get a chance to talk to Rod, Rod, Rod Kraft, do so. He's a good guy. Thank okay. you, Rod. Okay, so normally when you're going to buff out a car, what you're going to do is called a test spot. Okay, okay now, test spot. Now, this is so important. I'd say in the last month... I've had, you know, and I primarily work on the Auto Geek Forum. Yancey mostly runs the Dietzling One Facebook group. They do the same kind of thing. I just like the, the format of the forum because I, I, I put out tons of content and I can put it in a linear pictures, words, pictures, words. So it works better for me. But I have people come up all the time and um, they will explain how they buffed out their car, but at, when they go back and look at the results, there's still deeper scratches there or they didn't get all the swirls out. And what I point out to them is they, they did it wrong. They, they should have dialed in their process using a test spot to the point where whatever they did, whatever chemicals they and pad and combination they come up with, they can look at that spot and go, yeah, that looks good. Then you duplicate that over the rest of the car. And normally when you do a test spot, you want to do it on a panel that you can look down on. So that's the hood of the trunk lid. And it's usually the hood of the trunk lid that have the most defects. So theoretically, if that's true, if you can remove the defects to your satisfaction on a horizontal panel, it's going to look good on the vertical panels too. Rarely do you have panels on the side that look worse unless it's on a Jeep and someone's uh, driving through the tule bushes and scratching it from branches. I mean, other than that, you know, then you just have normal car wash scratches right. and things like that. So what I normally would do for a car is, first of all, is I would sell the customer a package. What, is this a show car or a daily driver? This is a daily driver. It's a commuter car, daily driver. It's not a show car. The right. guy that owns this, if he were to pay for detail, he probably wouldn't want package three show car detail. Yeah. He'd probably want entry level either. Package I just put one. up a picture of the car, so I mean the entire car. Yeah, so daily want driver. something like your entry level package where you're using an AIO, a, a one-step cleaner wax, or... If he really wanted to go all out, he may have you do a ceramic coating and it'd be your lower end, not your full compound and polish, but just one step polishing, then put the coating on. So it's gonna be in one of those two packages. Um, so at that point, I wanna first take into consideration what package am I doing to this car as I do my test spot. And, uh, and that'll determine you know, exactly what I wanna do. Uh, and then I'll do my test spot. Now, most of the time when you're, no matter whose chemical line, whose pad or whose tool you're going to use, you want to dial in a system where you're going to make, on average, eight section passes to each section of a panel. So that's, you're running the buffer here. Let me demonstrate here. here I'm, I got graphic. Okay, one, two, yeah. Okay, so you're making section passes. Okay, now, 
you're, you're not going to get nothing done if you do like three or four section passes. It's not going to do nothing. You need to work the abrasives or the paint long enough so they've got time to take little bites out and effectively level the paint. That's what you're doing. You're leveling. You're removing paint to level it. You visually make the defects removed. You actually don't remove a swirl and scratch. You remove the paint around a swirl and scratch. Make sense? Make sense. <laughs> and um, uh, so you want to dial in a process that you're right about eight section passes, maybe ten, but you're not using, I've never buffed at a car I did six. So, and, um, and, and then if you're happy with the results, then you repeat that over the rest of the car. Now, when it comes to the deeper swirls and scratches, you do your eight section passes. For me, if this was my package one daily driver, if they didn't come out in, uh, in my normal eight section passes, then I just say, hey, they're too deep to remove. We're going to learn to live with them. You know, I, I may go a little more aggressive just to make the customer happy, but overall, you know, once you dial in your process of say eight section passes using, let's say for example, the aggressive white foam pad and the fast correction cream, say that's gonna be your system. After you make your eight, maybe do 10 section passes, whatever's left behind, that's the deal. Um, and I don't mean to interrupt here. Yeah. Um, I got a couple of people asking about speed and stuff like that. Sure. Basically, when you do your when you do your section passes, um, you use the speed that you would be using, which would be for the entire car. For the entire car, it would be like a five or a six for compounding. It just depends on what step you're working at. So I don't <clears> know if you want to explain that a little bit more because I never have. No, it's a good topic. And so, what speed is now? All tools are a little bit different. And, Correct. Um, for, for me, most of the time, um, uh, I'm usually on the highest speeds, sometimes down just a tick or two. You know, maybe on this tool, speed five. When I originally wrote my review for the G9, mm -hmm. okay, I wrote in my review, I said, this is one of the first tools I've ever used where I wouldn't take it all the way to the max speed. It was just so powerful for a free spinning orbital polisher. I'm going to expect that that might be the case with this. I've never used it before, so I don't know. But you, you, you want to be on high speed, but the key thing is, is when you turn that polisher on, you've got to see that pad rotating. If it's just vibrating, okay? And, and the, like your little mark, makes sure you... If it's just jiggling... It isn't doing anything It ain't doing you. anything. So you've got to see, and if it is rotating, then it is oscillating. So you know you got oscillation if you got a rotation with the free spin random orbital. Um, so you anyway, need so oscillation and rotation for removal. Uh, I had it, it was a rhyme. Uh, <laughs> I just screwed it all up. For correction. For correction. Oscillation and os uh, rotation for correction. You should be a rapper. I am. Yeah. MC Gumdrop. Okay, so anyway, so this, the, doing the test spot, that's where you're going to test different products. And here's a tip. If you do in your, in your, wherever you do your first test spot, if the results don't look good, don't, you can't test in that section again. Your, your results will be skewed. You've already removed some paint there. So every time you do a test spot until you dial in that perfect uh, combination of pad, tool, and technique, you have to choose a new spot to do it in. That's why a trunk lid is good. You can just work like a little... Yeah, foot by foot I could easily do three test spots on this hood. Correct. Now, now there is Correct. something now, we always talk about using the least aggressive process. Some people say product, but it's actually the process. True, uh, if method. You, if you go from this tool to a rotary buffer, you just changed the oh, process you went way big time. <laughs> okay, so the least aggressive process to get the job done. And when we say get the job done, that means remove the defects to your satisfaction, you know, and, and, and while leaving the most pain on the car. That's what that whole thing means. Remove the defects to your satisfaction while leaving the most paint on the car so the paint can last over the service life of the car. Um, so for most cars like this, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm more of a foam pad guy, but I, I tell you, these are some really deep scratches. Yeah, let's highlight those if I could. Yeah, the, um, get your light out so I the, can... Again, the owner, you want the uh, LED or the other one? Either... Let's try the LED, see how it does. Uh, go up towards, let's see where you're at. Um, I'm down there, right there. Those are... D those are deep. Those are deep. Again, the owner said, in case you just tuned in, then that go over to the side over. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Up, back towards the window. Uh, there's the rest of them. I mean, it's hammered. Actually, yeah. you know what? Let me. I can throw up a graphic too. I have the actual picture. <laughs> neighbor said he thinks this. The, uh, the owner says he thinks it's the neighbor's cat that has done this. Yeah. And there, also, just to let you know, there's a term called rids. Yeah, um, here, I, I just threw up the picture. This is the actual picture of the car from the top down looking at it. There were the scratches I was just showing you guys. I mean, they are all over the back, and I, that'd be a dead cat in my neighborhood. Okay, so, <laughs> so RIDS, again, um, I included this in my very first how-to, but here it is. It's on page 35, RIDS, Random Isolated Deeper Scratches. And normally what this means 
is when you buff out a car, the first thing that are gonna be removed are the shallow defects, okay? As you take paint off and level it, the shallow ones will disappear. What will be left over are the deeper ones and now they're gonna stand out like a sore thumb because there's not a myriad of, or thousands of shallow Hiding ones. Them. You like that word myriad? Yeah, there's myriad. not a myriad, there's not thousands of shallow ones now kind of camouflaging them. So now they're just by themselves and they stand out. And this is where guys go, oh my gosh, I need to keep buffing to get that yeah. out. Right. Kind of, but right. remember, your paint is thinner than a post-it note. I, I, post -it I, took, note? I took your post-it yeah, note. So, so you have to balance it. Is it a show car? Is it a daily driver? Does it have the factory paint? Does it have custom paint? And if we took every single swirl and scratch out of this, you know, I don't know the owners of this car very well, but I can kind of tell he's not into car detailing. He hasn't taken care of his car. He's probably not gonna take care of it after I give it back to him. So why would I wanna put a show car finish on a car that someone's not gonna take care of? Or when pay I, for. Or pay for when I could just do a great job using a one-step cleaner wax, or in this case, I'm gonna show a, a multiple-step system just right. to show the system. Take a break for one second, hold your breath. All right, you can be back now. Okay, so uh, <laughs> anyway, does that make batteries, sense? People. Um, but, but that's what I would do. I would dial in it. Uh, uh, I know these aren't going to come all the way out. If I really wanted to get them out, though, I'd, I'm using an orbital polisher like this. I'd be using a microfiber pad. You always got to remember that fibers are a form of abrasive. These little fibers right there are a form of abrasive. So you have your compound as an abrasive and the fibers an abrasive. Then you got the action of the tool. You got downward pressure. And the other factor is time. Arm speed also, if you move the, your arm or if your you're posture moving slower, fast. you'll take more paint off. You'll level the paint faster. Um, but anyway, uh, because I'm primarily, I'm more of a foam pad guy, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to cut this with foam, then we'll take a look at it, then we'll repolish with microfiber, see if we can't get just a few more out. See uh, if we can correct And the, at that the point, I'd ones. call it good because, again, it's not, a sh it's not a show car. It's a daily driver. And here's, by the way, here's what I would tell the owner. I teach this in all my classes. I, I said this to the guy and he walked in. When you're talking to the owner of a car and you see these kind of defects and he goes, can you get these out? Here's what I, you know, work into the conversation. Did you buy this car new? And they're going to say either yes or no. If they say yes, then I would say, what are you doing to Don't your do car <laughs> to put these kinds of scratches Stop. in? Because the paint's thinner than the post to know, so it's really hard for me to get them all the way out, Jim. And Jim would say, well, you know, uh, I don't know how that happened, whatever he says. Now, if the guy says he bought it used, okay, I bought the car used, Mike, then the first thing I say is, did you get a good deal? Now, follow me. Everybody always says, oh, yeah, I got a good deal. No one ever says, no, I got a scrappy deal. And then you go, well, that's what you get for a good deal, Jim. You know, you I apologize to every Jim that watches these videos. We're not talking about you. It's just a name. I just use that. But anyway, the point is, is the, the problem with the deeper scratches is not my fault. It's their fault. I just want to make sure they understand that, and, and I'm a, limited in what I can do. And this is an opportunity for you to teach your, your client or your, your customer yeah. how to properly treat for their car so it lasts longer. Okay, so normally we talk about using the least aggressive process to get the job done. I can tell by looking at these scratches and by the paint thickness gauge readings I got that, look, the, 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 the less aggressive pads, the less aggressive products, they're not gonna do anything to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and start right out with the Griot's Garage Boss White Aggressive Foam Cutting Pad. Now, can you capture how I put these things on? Oh, I can, let's riveting. Okay, now it's important, whatever kind of tool you're using, that you center the pad. Now, I'm old and shaky. Yeah, you are. I'm not that shaky. No, <laughs> okay, but what I do is I use my thumb. So I'm gonna bring, the, as I get this closer, I'm gonna attach my thumb to the backing plate. So now, at least if I'm shaking, the shaking is in unison. Then I'm gonna look around as I bring this down. And for some reason, I always kind of think of like a spaceship landing on the moon. You know, the spaceship's coming down. Your mothership's coming home. The, mothership, <laughs> the spaceship's coming down. It needs to land flat. Well, I grew up watching a lot of black and white sci-fis, you know, so. But as the spaceship's coming down, it needs to land flat on the moon's surface. It can't land like this, it'll tip over. So. <laughs> When I'm putting these pads on, that's how I kind of look at it. This thing, it's coming Are down. You yeah, it's landing. I'm landing the, the rocket. Boom! That's oh. as flat. That's as perfect as it can get. <laughs> Anybody that's been in my class knows that's what I show them. But you know why? It's important to get that thing concentric. You know? That is literally the first time I heard you use what do you call it? The lunar over 
orbit landing thing. Yeah. <laughs> Too damn funny. <laughs> you need to go to my classes. <laughs> okay, fast correcting cream. Now, one of the things I really like about uh, Jeff Brown and Rodcraft too, and probably all the guys at Grills, is there's actually a design to this uh, rounded, kind of like a half a bubble top here. You actually use this to help prime your pad. Thing is, is I'm not good at it. I tell you, man, you get someone like uh, Nick Grio or Jeff Brown, and they just put this on like a pro. And it's going to be hard to see because it's white. But what they'll do is they'll start in the center and then kind of use the, the lid as their schmooing device. That's and spread and stick? Yep, that's their spread and stick. And, uh, and normally I wouldn't even bother priming a pad, but this thing is so coarse. If I don't, it's going to want to kind of hop all over the place. So, um, yeah, that's my other joke. Wherever I go, I take a spreading stick. Here it is. There. Yeah, it's corny. It never gets any better. <laughs> <laughs> now, the lunar landing rover, that was good. The you had me Spaceship. That, that was, I can just see you on the moon landing. You know how you there. can tell a really good B sci-fi movie from the 50s? If you see the strings or not? If you see the strings <laughs> as they move the model plastic spaceship across the blackboard. Okay, so that's actually more product than you need, but... Um, one thing I'm not is I'm not a three P size drop guy. You need a certain amount of product on the surface working for you. You need lubrication, you need abrasives. So, okay. You so gonna work that, which section are you gonna work? This is one right here in front of me. Those ones, the, let me just show you. The We're ones gonna, that I could really see really we well. We can put a tape line down here if you want. So I'm gonna go like right there. Yeah, those are the ones that I could really see really well. Okay. Those and these right here. Just for fun, let's put a tape line down. Just for fun. Just I for fun. It. It's fun, people. Tape lines are fun. <laughs> Removing the tape line is not. I'm just warming up here. Oh, shit. Let me get a bigger tape. See how that black mark lets me see with my eyes if I got pad rotation? Or if it's just kind of wiggling there. There, see, it's just it's not rotating right now. Now it's rotating. Okay. All right. Let me get the camera up in there so you guys can see. Okay. First thing you do when you're doing a test spot or buffing out a car is spread your product out and you're mapping out in your mind's eye the section that you're going to buff and then stick to that section. A lot of guys start doing this as they're buffing, they go a little further. That's called the creep. <laughs> that's called buffer creep. Pretty soon you're doing half the hood or half the trunk lid. So map out your sections and stick to them. So now that I've got it set out, I'm just going to go ahead and do eight solid section passes. I'm going to bring the speed up to six on this guy. What's my technique, Yancey? You count out loud. One. Everybody at home, count out loud. Two. You see how he's overlapping? Three. So section pass. Four. That's one. And he's rotating the opposite direction. Five. Which will give you that. Six. is a section pass. Seven. And here's my last section pass. There's eight. All right. And uh, uh, first experience with the brand new uh, Boss 21. Uh, first of all, the first thing I notice is it has a lot of power. <laughs> and I've never met a guy that goes, yeah, I wish I had a tool that was really wimpy. <laughs> you know? Could you take some power <laughs> out of that, said no man ever. <laughs> if I send this back in, could you put a smaller motor in there? Uh, nobody thinks like that. Okay, that's called splatter dots, by the way. Okay. Okay, so first of all, um, if, if a customer brought me this car and I gave them back something that looked like that, they'd probably be pretty happy. Look at the, the clarity light, and gloss. The, the light for me? No, yeah. The, the, um, yeah. Look at the clarity and gloss. It already looks a million times better. Yeah, I wish I had instant replay on this camera. Uh, tilt the camera, I mean the light down towards you. Uh, now, move it around. Yeah, look at that. 
Look at how much it cleared that up, people. And so here's something I always Where's those scratches at? I can Here's I can, something I always say in type. Sometimes you can't remove oh. a scratch, but you can improve a scratch. Okay. Put the ones right there in the middle. Right here? Uh yeah. Right there? Use your finger. No, no, no. Okay, right here. Nope. The other ones come down this more one? towards me. Oh, these ones that yeah. you liked. These ones right here. Yeah, you see how those are almost gone. They're almost gone. gone. They're almost gone. Yeah. Okay. So, so, you know, this is just basic polish, and we removed the millions of shallow ones, and now these deeper ones stand out like a sore thumb. And this is where new detailers will go, oh, I've got to go farther. I've got to get these out. And you could take it a little bit further, but, you know, you just, you just got to train your brain to remember the factory clear coat is thin. You know, so gauge what you do for your customer to the package you've sold them. Everybody should have multiple packages. Some guys call them uh, three star, four star, five star. You know, I like to just use package one, package two. Don't, don't make your customers work at trying to figure out how to give you money, okay? Keep it simple. But I see platinum package, the gold package. Whenever people use platinum and gold and silver, yeah, I gotta you think. <laughs> I gotta think, which one's worth more money? Is platinum worth more than gold or is it palladium? Yeah, you right. <laughs> Divinium. <laughs> Unobtainium. Unobtainium. You know, so uh, keep it simple. Okay, so uh, if this was my package one detail and I compounded this or used a cleaning wax and got those results, I'd, I'd stop. Now, in my classes, I do teach the concept of under promise over deliver. And what that basically means is even though that would be my package right there, I would go ahead and compound this. If I, you know, let me back up. If I was using a cleaner X, I'd go ahead and compound this to take more of the scratches up because this is the panel your customer looks in at. In the high area spots. Yeah, the, 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 the hood and the roof. Yeah, right. Usually the hood and the, the trunk lid. You know, so when they look, and no one's going to get down here like this and go, well, you did a good job, but I still see a scratch right there, Mike. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody does that, especially for package one. Okay, but for you guys that want to know how far can you go, first, let's take some readings. Okay, and that was eight solid section passes. Would everybody agree? No, that was. Okay. We all counted So out first, line. first we turn it on. I'm going to do it over here. Oh, turn it on, on. Hold on. No, I by using it. it. 6.9. Now that, this is, I'm just turning it on. Okay, so now that it's on. Okay. Right. Now here's my scratch. So just relatively, I just come out here. 6.2. 6.4. 6.5. So I took off about one to two mils through yeah, a heavy had, compounding. What did I have written down? I had five, four, and four, 6.5, 6.4, 6.4. So I mean, it, plus you didn't get in the right exact same measurement. Uh, okay, area. let's go for the Yes, I did. Uh, who the big was guns. it? There was uh, Harish, Harish Remember. Tijuana. Remember, attach this your one, thumb. The, yep, he's doing his little thing again, people. Then monitor as you're getting closer. Make sure it's Lunar lined up. Let me, let me, actually, you know what? Here, let's do it this way. Bring your pad back up. Okay. We're actually going to land the lunar module here. It's, it's the key is your thumb. You're going to attach your thumb to the backing plate. All right, here we go. Graphic. Now you're not in the air wiggling around. See that? Okay. Excuse me, then, NASA, coming in for landing. Then I look around as I bring it down. And Houston, boom. we have touched. Look at that. It's perfect. <laughs> Sorry. That's how you put a pad on a backing plate. I was having fun okay. with commentary over here. So this is a microfiber pad, and unlike a foam pad, it's important that every one of the fibers is coated with product. So again, I'm going to reach down here and get my product spreader out so I take it wherever I go and I work this into the fibers. Okay, and Harash Paiwana, I think I said your name right, or if not, I totally butchered it. This is for you. He was one that was really wanting to see how the microfiber pad would take those out. So we can do a second one over there, but um, the, you know, the, I think you'll get the same idea here. Fiber is an ab ab abrasive, so it's going to do a better job. So now after I've primed the pad. And you got stuff all over that bottle. Here's my three dime size drops. I am not a pea size drop guy. Got that? Uh, yep. Okay. Wipe my finger off my product spreader. Okay, so now we'll just do eight more solid section passes. All right, uh, let me... What's the first thing we do? Spread your product out. Spread our out. product out. Okay, I have a uniform layer of abrasives. That's why you, another reason you spread your product out. You want oh, you know what you can do? Um, when you're done, just so that way we can show the actual how fast that, that cuts, right there on that edge mm -hmm. where you're at. Right here? 
Yeah, we can do that with microfiber because you didn't do that any. Sure. Any, yeah. All right. Really bad scratches yeah. there. That's where the cat would have been. Uh, <laughs> this is the Garfield moment. Okay, up to six. One. Two. Three, four, there's five, six, seven, last one. Man, that thing has a big old foot on it. I mean, it just looks massive in the camera. It's a nice tool. Another home rung for Grios. Okay. Now, and while you're doing this, I have just one person asking. Emily Hess. Um, I'm going to add this to the broadcast. Uh, it's not a stupid question. There is no stupid questions. The only stupid question is a question not asked. Um, can someone tell me what pads to buy to do this? You could buy these Grio pads to run on your torque uh, polisher. You could ride Lake Country. You could buy uh, Buff and Shine. I, for the for the is it the Torque 10 FX? It, Emily, if you yeah. heard that, if you can answer the, him. For, just let me just real quickly. The the Griot's Boss pads are great pads. One of the things that's nice about them is look at the hole. You can line them up. Okay. What the hole does is most of the heat generated on these types of tools comes through the bolt that locks the backing plate onto the spindle. The heat transfers through the drive mechanism through the bolt into the backing plate, heats up the foam pad, and it causes delamination. When you put a hole there, the heat goes into the air <laughs> and your pads last longer. So not only are they well-designed pads, but they got the heat, uh, the, they got a, a, a simple design that really helps your pads to last longer over time. And everybody knows that one of the things I'm always preaching and teaching is you need more pads to buff out a car. Uh, to buff out this car, you'd want one pad per panel. One pad for the trunk lid, one pad for the fender, one pad for the door. So a two-door car, two car has nine panels. That's nine pads. A four-door car would have 11 panels, 11 pads. Most people when they buff out cars, they're not using enough pads. This is specific to foam pads. If you're using fiber pads, eh, you could probably get away with one or two because unlike foam, as this gets wet, it's not going to lose its cut. The fibers are always working for you. Going to cut. They're an abrasive. Foam gets soft, it gets squishy, quits cutting. Okay. And by the way, she had the regular torque. Okay. But anyway, the the the, the boss pads from Griots would be a great pad for that tool. Now, one of the things I just want to point out is, is that product stayed liquid the entire time oh, I'm here, buffing, and it never got dusty on do me. Do the finger test. Oh, look at that. Look, it's still, it's, still a, it's still a film, a wet film. Okay, then wipe off is easy. Mr. Miyagi, wipe off. Okay. Oh, wow. All right. I can't. And scratches are still, some of the deeper ones are still there. A lot of them are gone. I barely see that. But, but big picture is this, standing from here, th th that paint looks amazing. And again, if you're doing this for yourself, well, A, if you bought the car new, quit putting deep scratches in. B, if you bought it used, that's what you get when you buy a used <laughs> car. <laughs> All right, let's do that one right there. If you're doing it right for there. a customer, same thing, though. Okay, you want to try the other light this time? Does it matter? Look uh, at no swirls at all. That's from none. a microfiber pad, um, no hazing. Take the light and tilt it down. There you go, that's better. All right, now move it around. All right, can you go to where those scratches are at? Yep, right up there. All right, now take the light and tilt it down. Like that? Yeah. Okay. I can't barely see. There, oh, there could, they are, there yeah. they are. I can barely see those scratches now. There's like three scratches out of that myriad of scratches that were there. Myriad. There's they're, and they're again. very small now. All right, do the microfiber just so that way we can show how fast that microfiber can cut. I got it right on oh, the Oh, right edge. here? Yeah. Okay. Now that my pad is already uh, broken, broken in. in, normally what I would do is I would grab the air squirter and after every other section pass, blow this out with this, a pinpoint air squirter to blow out the, ex the paint that's been removed and the spent product. Remember, anytime you're buffing on a car, you're braiding it, you're having two things build up on the face of the pad, spent product 
and removed paint. And that's why you need to clean it. Just like we wipe that residue off the paint, we need to wipe or get that residue off the face of the pad before we put fresh pad on or we'll pollute and dilute the new product that we put on the pad. How's that for rhyming? Whoa, you should be a rapper. And you're saying I Okay, was a so you got these scratches right here? Yep. Okay, so let me let me kind of break this in a little bit. Okay. Uh, this is a good point to teach something. Right now, um, whenever you're looking at a body panel, you look at the shape of the panel and let it tell you how to buff it out. We have an edge and we have a raised body line. So I'm not going to try to make section passes over this. It just doesn't work. So I'm just going to buff this plane. See, that's a plane, that's a plane. I'm gonna, and usually what I'm doing... Are you I'm, tattoo from Fantasy Island? Z plane, Z plane. <laughs> and usually when I'm doing a, um, a linear panel, so linear long, a long panel like this, I don't do eight section passes. I usually bump it up to 10 or 12, depending on the severity of the defects. In this case, I'll go ahead and do 12. So that would look like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And yes, if I'm out here buffing at a car, see those kung fu reflexes? No, I missed it because I was answering <laughs> questions. You will hear me counting out every plane or section I buff out like that. It okay, reduces... the grand reveal. Hold on, let me get in close. So that way we're, we're all watching it in real time. Okay. And go. Let me get down here and look like I'm focused. All I see is your hand, by the way. Okay. All Man, right. look at that. All right, took out majority of them. I do see a couple. Oh yeah, this ones. deeper one here, some deeper the ones, ones right there. there. They're ridiculously but, deep. But all the other ones that were in between all those ones are gone. And look at how fast that that was correct. So awesome. So, um, so then the question is, is if you really wanted to go further, how could you get those deeper defects? It, maybe not remove them, but reduce and improve them. We have a video for that. <laughs> spot, spot repair. <laughs> we did have a video Well, for that. one thing you could do is you could buff again. Yes, okay. you could. Yes, you, just, you could. Sorry, you know, I'll buff just again. off topic. Another thing you could do is come down and just lightly sand it. And, and um, that could open it up. Just know what you're doing if you're getting out the sandpaper, doing it in one little area. When it, let me show you how I do it real quick. Yes, please. Okay, I'll show you how I do it. He'd vanish from the screen, people. That's how he would do it. Dun, dun, dun. He's digging. He's digging. You, you could do this a couple ways really safely. Here's here's one. You getting three thousand? The three thousand Trizac. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, you could go five thousand, eight thousand, but I mean, why? I mean, yeah. you, you actually need to do some abrading. Okay, then there's a couple ways you could do this. I'll show you the way I would do it though. If if the cameras are on, I'd probably just spit on the sandpaper. Uh. <laughs> that would be my lubricant. <laughs> Whatever's closest to you. <laughs> I have that. <laughs> Like that, and then just sand. So he has a bottle <laughs> the, for nothing? The, the paint doesn't care what kind of lubricant you use, but here's just a little bit of uh, Sonax glass cleaner. I use this on everything. And just come down and just lightly sand. And yes, you can use Trizac discs by hand. Go look at the 3M website. It says right on there, can't be used by I hand. I have used it many times. Okay, so just come back and forth like that. And I can tell you right now, this thing, this is a deep scratch. There's it's, no it's, way. I think it's all the way down to the There's primer. no way you could get this out without burning through the clear coat. But you, you, again, my goal is usually to improve if I yeah. can't remove. Okay, so up here, there's a couple more deeper ones. We'll just come up here and just. And I usually try to go like 90 degrees against them. Uh, don't go in, in line with them. Don't go uh, 45 degrees against them. Just kind of go to angle. So. What do you think happens is if I'm, when I'm buffing, I turn my buffing pad over and I see gray paint? <laughs> oops. <laughs> That's a bad sign. <laughs> That's an oops moment. <laughs> That's where I fall back on my business slogan. It ain't my car. It ain't my car. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that horrible? Okay, so for this here, you know, uh, a lot of guys might go, well, you need a micro tool. Well, nope, I'm just going to use the tool I already got plugged in. 
And can you, you see those answers? Yes, I can. I, okay. I have those very well documented right now, and we're going to watch you in real time get rid of those. Okay. And watch the scratches too after he's done, people. I'm just going to leave the camera right there. Two, three, four, five, six. I just did six passes. I was pushing pretty hard. I just want to see if that was enough to pull out 3,000 grit sandy marks, and it did flawlessly. So that tries like some nice stuff. Now, again, these are some pretty deep scratches. I can see a little bit of sandy marks right there on the edge. And then, um, but these are almost all going away gone. Yeah, I mean, I, I can see them, they're but they're definitely improved, you know, Completely smoothed over, though. There's yeah. no, like, hard edge to them at all. Um, but anyway, that's that's how I would do it. I just take a little piece of 3,000 grit. Let me just finish it. Up. And uh, I call that feather sanding. Just kind of feather them out. If you type in feather sanding to Google, what do you call when you walk backwards with a polish in your hand, Mike? Uh, I don't know. I thought you might have a term for that. No. It seems like you have a term for okay. everything. Okay. Anyway, uh, that's uh, that's kind of the big picture when you're trying to remove uh, deeper defects out of car paint. You need to understand the car paint is thin to start with if it's factory paint. If it's a show car and it has a custom paint job, well, in that case, usually the painter, the custom painter, put a it put on more paint. You have more to work with. Chances are, you know, I've worked on a lot of custom paint jobs in my life. Usually by the time I get to them, you know, somebody else long ago already did the initial wet sand cut and buff. Usually the, the painter's usually the, apprentice. <laughs> yeah, the, the painter's helper. The yeah. body shop usually already sanded and buffed them. They don't like letting other people mess on their paint jobs. And if something goes wrong, they can re-squirt it right then and there. So by the time you get it, even though they may have put on three or four heavy coats, some has already sanded off one or two. But you still have more paint to work with. So your... your uh, your confidence level can be higher to go ahead and get more aggressive to pull out the deeper defects. But when you're working on factory paint, you've got to remember well, that this paint is, a question I don't think is I've ever thinner asked. than a post-it note. And I, I tell you, here's, here's how I type. When you, when you buff through someone else's clear coat, and if you're buffing with a light-colored pad, and you turn your buffer over and you see the color of the paint on that pad, here's what I tell people. Words cannot describe the heart-sinking feeling that overcomes you when you discovered you've burned through the paint on someone else's car. Because uh, it's, here's what's gonna happen. Any money you were making buffing out that car, you just you, lost, it. You just lost <laughs> getting that panel repainted. You gotta tell the customer and show them, hey, sorry, Jim, look what I did to your car. And then you gotta start figuring out how you're gonna, you know, Who's, what body shop are you? I mean, all these thoughts are going to start going through your head. So it, you know, put the brakes on, since let's use a car analogy. Instead of trying to get every single swirl and scratch out of someone's finish, keep everything in context. What package did they buy? Is it package one, package two, package three? Is it a daily driver? Is it a show car? If, did they buy the car new? Did they buy the car used? You know, figure all this stuff out and then be real honest with the customer. Have a set of post-it notes around and go, look, you know, this is what I can do without compromising your clear coat. I have a question, because I, I think I've asked it, but it's been a while since I've probably asked you this question. Um, what is the thickest that paint that you remember ever measuring and working on? Oh, um, I, th I remember we had one down here. I think it was for a cover in, of in a the magazine. thirty mil range. Yeah, I think the, it was the, the orange one, wasn't it, with the flames? Wasn't that one? Really? Yeah, that one had some. So here's what he's asking about. Okay, so. I, I can't speak to all the other paint thickness gauges. Remember, we actually buffed this again. You want to do Oh, that? yeah, let me, um, let me. But I think this thing kicks out at 35 mils. So if or it could be 30. So here's my scratch right here. So I'm just going to go in a line out from it. Six. Six. Okay, so we've taken off some measurable paint there. Oh, yeah, we have. Yes, we've dropped at least two numbers coming at down. At least two to four mils. Yeah. yeah. So uh, most car manufacturers say you can safely remove 0.5 mils or half a mil. Uh, we just took off around four. So I wouldn't want to go any further. And again, I, I, I would make sure the customer understood that the problem with the defects not coming out, it's not my problem. <laughs> okay. Problem it's, you know, what happened to the paint? Quit doing whatever that is that 
you know, you're doing to it. A lot of people would set down a bag of groceries or a gym bag and then yank it off, and that's where the scratches come from. In this case, it was a cat. Uh, so you just use common sense. You never did answer my question. But, you, you know, again, for all the young detailers, and we were all young detailers at one time, don't get into this mindset of every car that you detail, you have to put a show car finish on. If you're new to detailing, you've got to come up with a menu of packages, okay? And that way you have something for everybody. You know, the analogy I use for people is like, uh, I like to do my own mechanical work. If the starter motor goes out on my Chevy, I go down to Napa, and they usually offer me three starter motors, good, better, and best. best. Yep. Okay, I usually go for the middle. And your customers are going to be like that too. Not everybody's going to want a show car finish on their daily driver. They just, they want the tires black, they want the windows clear, they want the paint shiny and the interior to smell clean again. That's not removing every scratch out of the paint job. All right. You ready for some questions? I think we're sure. done with that. Sure. Where are you moving off to? I'm, I'm kind of done. I can, uh, I can do anything Why don't you else? move back over on the other side? That way I can get a little bit better of a looking shot. Oh, we never did do a... Yeah, just kind of see the difference in gloss and clarity. <sighs> see, I was moving ahead. Oh, wow. Look at the difference. Huge yeah. difference. You want to get your light out? Grizz makes a nice system, you know. Uh, I tend to recommend... Can you get your light? Oh, yeah. I'm waiting on you. I tend to recommend... You know, I get asked a lot by people what's you, which one you want LED or it doesn't matter let's go with the swirl finder all right there's all right now move the light back down towards you there you go now go back and forth between the up go the other way there you go all right now slowly come back towards you all right let me get it in focus all right now go back before after <laughs> okay You'll Pretty need good. to stay late and finish the rest of the car. Well, I did my spot. Yeah, we, we got to hurry up. They're going to be getting off of work here before too long. Yeah, that's right. Um, but a lot, you know, I get asked a lot from people about, you know, when you want to get into, if, you're, if you've always worked by hand and you want to get into machine polishing, why is a good polisher to start out with? And I would normally recommend the Griot's G9. And I'll tell you, this is a great tool, don't get me wrong. The G9, that means nine millimeter. So it's got a much smaller orbit stroke length than this big daddy right here. And for a beginner, it's just gonna be, now watch how I say this, it's gonna be easier to learn how to use and master. Those are two things, not just one. And you know, the only way you become an expert with any tool is to spend hours with it buffing out cars. You're not gonna get it just by buffing out a hood. Uh, so for your entry level tool, the Griot's Garage G9, nine millimeter, um, tackle just about anything that ever pulls in your driveway. It's 150 bucks, I think. Yeah, 149. A lifetime warranty. It you comes can't beat the warranty on in Griot's tools. It comes um, with do a me a favor, slow turn pad that, option. Turn that tool sideways so that way people can see it. Sideways. You bet. Yeah. Um, all right, now we're going to do a lightning round here because we are pushing time and we need to get this car done for the warehouse guy and he's going to be getting off work here. So we're going to do a little bit of a lightning. So keep your answers short if you can. Don't okay. Rattle alarm. Um, let's see how well that works out for me. Uh, all right, first one, Matt Reynolds, does the, he's talking about the, the paint thickness gauge, does that read multiple layers? No, and the, the tools that do cost thousands of dollars, and, and a good question, and I cover this in my detailing classes, but let me just break this down with you, and anybody that's been through my class, they, they're going to pick up on what I'm saying. When you're detail, if you're detailing cars for money, you do not have the time to go out in the garage and try to plot the thickness of every panel. You'll never get to the car. You know, I use this for a big picture indicator. I didn't really talk about that. What I call the uh, uh, go or no go. When I take a measurement on a factory finish and it's down in the three mils or lower, I don't really want to be compounding that car. That, that's some seriously thin paint. If the, you know, if, you know, we don't know what the underlying primer is or what they call the E coat or the base coat, but they're, they're usually pretty thin. You know, they're just cover coats. Uh, so uh, those really complicated and fancy paint thickness gauges, I mean, you can look like a rock star and use them for marketing, but as far as to practically think you're gonna go out in the garage and measure and plot out every two inches on a panel for the entire car, and then put that through your computer software and pull it up and somehow find something to think about from the information it gives you, versus just go out and do eight section passes. Buff the car out. Okay. Don't, don't take things that are really simple and turn them into rocket science. Yeah, don't overthink the problem, people. Um, all right, here's one that's a little bit off topic, but we're going down the thing. 
Uh, Armando Velez. Hey, Armando. Hey, guys, can I clay vinyl matte stripes GT350, wax them, or ceramic coat them? You know, we just had a GT350 down here, and um, I did clay. I did clay the vinyl stripes on Just a uh, very fine clay. Not I aggressive. used an ultra fine clay. Not a fine, ultra fine. Lots of lube, light pressure. But the other thing is, is uh, if you go to my Instagram page, you'll see a video where you see me machine polishing the swirls and scratches that were already in those stripes when the customer dropped it off here. So you can machine polish scratches out of some vinyl stripes. You don't know until you do a... Test spa. test spa. Do a little test somewhere. But I'll tell you one thing, you better be using really good abrasive technology if you're going to start buffing on people's graphics. Okay. And Next. the graphics on the GT350 are like a clear coated graphic. They were blue, but when I buffed and turned my pad over, I'm not pulling any color. So they're a clear coated or clear overlaid graphic. Just be careful. Okay, moving along. Uh, this is Martian. <laughs> Martian. No, that's not how you. Marcin? Marcin. I'm not even going to try your last name, sorry. I'm not going to ruin it. Uh, do you control the temperature during polishing? Are you trying not to heat the lacquer? I guess he's thinking that we're working on lacquer, but... Uh, you know, if you're using common sense and doing eight section passes with the orbital polisher, free spinning random orbital polisher, you're not going to create enough heat to be a problem. A Stuck rotary problem. would be where you're going to get uh, into heat. Yeah, rotary is where you're going to create a lot of heat. And you know, I, I have an article on that. It's called The Fight or Flight method of checking surface temperature. And as you're buffing out a car, if you're concerned about heat, take your hand, because last time I went anywhere, I remember I took my hand with me oh <laughs> and put it down on the surface. Now, if you can continue holding a conversation while your hand is on that paint, it's probably not too hot. But when you put your hand down, if you go, ow, and your hand instantly flies away, that's your flight mechanisms kicking in, kicking in, and it's probably too hot. Stop buffing there. Okay. This is really important when you're doing isolated scratches because you can really heat it up. Real when quick. you're buffing a larger panel, as you're buffing over here, the paint's cooling down here. As you're buffing over here, the paint's cooling down here. When you stay on one area and just run that buffer, the panel never cools down. So you create a lot of heat, and that's where guys get into the problem of doing two things: they burn through or they twist. They actually twist the paint when every one of these days we'll do it we'll actually demo, demo we got, that. yeah twist the paint they heat it up and spin it when they're using a rotary buffer working on isolated defects so uh, you can buff out isolated defects but just buff a little bit then stop let it cool off buff a little bit stop let it cool off okay moving on remember short concise um uh, ivan Campanzio. I've seen some detailers that connect lights to their polishers. Is there one that you guys like? Have you even tried it? Have we have the Brightmax. Is, is and that the flamethrower? Brightmax? Flamethrower, yeah. It actually works good. I, I uh, did a video for uh, the guy that owns that company out in um, uh, Vegas at SEMA a couple years ago. And one of the things, it was the first time I'd used it. I was using it on black paint. And what I liked about it is I could see the swirl defect removal in real time. I mean, as I'm making a pass coming back, I could, right there with that light on it, I could see, wow, I'm done. I can so move there, on. So there, there is pros that you can there's see a, right there, but yeah. then there's also cons because now you have something else sticking out on your, you have to watch. You, there, the there's pros and cons of both. So here's, here's how I approach detailing most of the time is I dial in my process with a test spot. Once I find a combination of pad, chemical, tool, and technique where I can do roughly eight section passes to a section of paint, you could blindfold me and I could buff out the rest of the car because I'm just going to keep doing eight section passes. Oh, I think that we should put that to the and, test and, one day. And I'll get the same results. <laughs> okay. In fact, for that reason, it doesn't matter what color the walls are. It yeah. just doesn't matter. Yeah. I, I'm going to do a test spot and duplicate the test spot if the walls are pink, black, or white. It doesn't matter. It, could, it might not hurt to, to modify things like that, the light, the color of the walls. But at the end of the day, I'm going to dial in a test spot. I'm going to repeat the it. test spot over the rest of the car. I'm going to get the car done, get my okay. money, stick a fork in it, kick it out the door, go home, put my feet up, and watch a movie. All, right, all these other guys out here, are, what are they doing all this time? Okay. Mm -hmm. Short, <laughs> sweet, concise. Yeah. Um, Carl L. Coft. I think that's how you say your last name. Uh, what is the best pads products for black paint? All right, we go down this, I think, this question every time. Um, all paints are different. Uh, Chevy's different, Ford's... Yeah, paint hardness, paint softness. I mean, black is black, and welcome to your new full-time job if you have a black <laughs> car. But uh, the best way to do is get a couple different ones and either compounding or polishing, pick a manufacturer you, and it, run with them. It starts with using quality abrasive technology. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to say names of products I know that don't use 
quality abrasive technology, but here's the problem. Quickly, there are products out there okay. that don't work good, okay? And one way to find them is if you're up on a Facebook group or on a forum like mine and you see people over and over and over again saying, hey, I buffed out my black car with this product, now the paint looks gray. That's because it's called micromarring. The abrasives micromarred the paint. You can't use those kinds of products. If you're using quality products, then it doesn't matter what color the paint is because you're working on clear coat not the color black. Okay. Black just shows everything. Yeah, right. Like I said, welcome to your new full-time job. All right, quickly, I got two more questions, so speed answers. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll do my best. There are clear, uh, are there clear tinted, uh, are there tinted clears for people that don't know? Yeah, there, you know, there's, uh, there's that, I got an article on that. I got candies. an article on everything, but yeah, tinted clear. So after they spray down the base coat, they put a little bit of the color coat into the clear, spray that in. It's supposed to give it kind of a 3D effect. Yeah. And if you're buffing, say, with a white pad and a white polish on a red, I did a red Camaro that had the tinted red, yeah. and I turned the pad over, and I'm just, I'm not seeing red, I'm seeing pink, because it's just a or little bit. Or then you could do, like, uh, some people, they'll even put, like, pearl in it and then you'll get an iridescent looking inside there? Yeah. I mean, it's more on bikes. There, there, there are tri-coats and special yeah. effects paints and tinted yeah. clears. Uh, bu 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 the next one. Uh, now, after the use of the Boss Fast Correcting, the paint needs to be polished with a light yes. polish, or yeah. Boss can finish so well with a foam pad. Um, depends on the paint. Pretty depends much. on the paint. <laughs> if you've got a really hard paint, you could finish out. It depends on your standards too. For me, I never finish out with just fiber. If I if I start with fiber, I at least do one other pass with foam, because I don't want this customer going down the road, washing the car a few times, and have micro marring or what I call pad haze show up out in the sun. So I'm always going to repolish. But for me on this car here, I'll tell you that that looked good. Okay. You know. All right, we got one more question, and then I'm gonna. Bring in what Rod just said. So um, real quick, if if I was, I'm going to do this car after I cut that with the compound. I would come for me. I'd probably just come down with the black and the the pad and the finish. Because we had good results. Because it's going to leave a wax. Right. You know, all these three things here. There's no protection in these. So the the results you get is just the the shine of the paint. You still need to put something on it to protect it. So for this case, I'm going to use this. But you could strip it and put a coating on it, or you know. Put whatever you want on there. All right, um, one last question. I think this is a good one. Da, 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 da. Um, Chris Mendoza, yes, what do you call it? Uh, your answer to that would be yes. <laughs> Using Black, Blackfire AI, <laughs> it would work well, but yes, that would be yes. Um, Th this is a great candidate for Blackfire one, one step. step. Yeah. All right, uh, Harash, I, I know I killed your name twice and I apologize 3,000 times. All compounds have abrasives, and why does it happen that all compounds don't work the same on paint? I feel the need to have multiple polishes to do the same sorts of jobs. Uh, just for chemistry. Chemistry, different In, compounds, different abrasives. Yeah, technology. different carrying agents, different solvents, different polishing oils. You know, uh, just real quickly, I always see people talking about how this compound or that polish leaves fillers behind, and, and people that say that are, are kind of ignorant because what they're calling a filler is called the lubricating oils. <laughs> you have to have something lubricating the surface as you abrade it. Well, not, it's just, just by chance it. <laughs> that those oils do mask. If, if there is a defect behind, they could be masking it, but, but the chemist that put that in there to do that on purpose, you have to lubricate the abrading effect, and those are called polishing agents or lubricating oils. Even a water-based compound or polish still has lubricating oils in it, okay? Right. Well, water. Is Otherwise, just take a handful of sand and mix with some gasoline and buff out a car. You know? <laughs> and light a match. There's, no, fil fun. <laughs> There's no fillers there. All right, uh, <laughs> last thing that we're going to end on here. You're chemically uh, stripping as This you is buff. from Rod. Rod Kraft, thank you for tuning in. Uh, Mike and Yancey, I'm sorry I couldn't jump in during more of your video. I'm driving and can't do both. Smart man, you did a great job, and thanks for reviewing our new G21. Thank you, Rod. I can't wait to work with you again. Yeah, I'm it's waiting, awesome, dude. I'm waiting for my present, Rod. <laughs> um, <laughs> but anyways, let me, I think we're done. That was newbie, hold on. Hope that helped somebody out there. You know, I, I understand what it's like to want to get every single scratch out of a car, but you just, you got to understand paint is thin, and what you don't want to do is buff so long that you burn through, because <laughs> if you burn through the paint, you're going to have to repaint the panel or the area. If you can only afford to repaint the area, that means you're going to have a blend line. Nobody likes a blend Nobody line. Nobody likes blend lines. All right, um, it's like tan lines, only worse. They're on your car. Um, Mendoza, uh, Carlos, I think was your first name. Yes, your wife will be happy because you're able to get the $149.99 uh, polisher, save money, get your defects out, and make the wife happy. So take her to dinner. Here's your gloves. Uh, how about you have a glove and I have a glove? <laughs> uh, so next week, I think we should do that beginner, uh, what you were just talking about. 
Oh, uh, how to get a new customer? How to get a new customer. Yeah, that's, uh, a, that's a good video. I think we'll do something along that line, so teach you how to talk to your customers. You know, how to get a new customer and how to actually talk to your customers. There, so, now I can detail. Yep, oh, there you go. I can do right. things like hold a bottle. I'm going to... Or hold uh, a paint thickness <laughs> gauge. I can hold a flashlight. I couldn't do it without the glove. Uh, I'm glad, I'm glad that your vacation... <laughs> Made it where you can actually know detail, heaven forbid. No, I think it's just funny how everybody's always got a picture of themselves wearing a glove. Well, you know. tis the season right now. Um, speaking of that, all of you guys be safe out there. Until next week, remember we do this every Tuesday at 3 o'clock, live detailing 101, or live detailing, detailing classes. Don't forget, Mike has a detailing class coming up in September. September, uh, three-day class. To, go to autogeek.com for more information about that. And other than that, next week, how to get a new detailer? I get a lot of questions about my boat class. It's always in February. It always sells out. So put that on your calendar. The class is going to be in February. We haven't decided the date, but it'll probably be the second week into Feb February. Yeah, right, nope. It's a two-day class. I bring in the biggest boats in the worst condition. And I teach you how to take them from neglected to respected and ceramic coat them inside and out. No, cool he does it, it's amazing watching the transformation of these things. Yeah. So with that being said, we will see you next week. I am going to leave you, and you get the rest of that. Since you have, see, that's the reason why I didn't put my gloves on, because now you actually have to go do work. Okay. Bye, everybody.